Welcome back to The Lead. We're going to continue with politics and take a detailed look at each candidate's path to 270. Just last week, the numbers leaned barely in favor of Clinton. We could see just enough states for her to win Election Day with 272 electoral votes, but that was before the second debate, before Trump's explosive Access Hollywood tape, tape before he started a war within the Republican Party. But to be clear, it was also before Clinton started facing more of her own struggles, specifically stolen emails released by WikiLeaks targeting her campaign. So what's the new battleground for Clinton and Trump? CNN's John King mapping it out on the magic wall. Well, Jim, we haven't officially changed our CNN map. We still have it projecting right now 272 for Clinton, 196 for Trump. The gold states, four of them left, are toss-up states. But we're going to look at this as this week goes on to see if this backlash against Trump after that tape release lasts or whether it dissipates as the days pass. Because at the moment, Florida, Hillary Clinton leads. That's a change from before the first debate. North Carolina, likewise. Clinton now leads. Ohio, Clinton now leads. And Nevada. Clinton now leads. That is the recipe, if it holds, Jim, for an electoral college blowout. But we want to wait a little bit, let the polls dissipate, see what it looks like at the end of the week as we go. But let's switch maps and take a look at the new environment and what a tough environment it is for Donald Trump right now. The thing getting the most buzz today in Ruby Red, Utah, about as conservative as you can get, stunner. Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump in a tie and at only 26 percent. The conservative third party candidate Evan McMullen in the hunt at 22 percent. The libertarian Gary Johnson, 14 percent. That the race in Utah is competitive tells you how tough the map is right now for Donald Trump. That's about as red as you get. Should be reliably Republican. Hillary Clinton's, that's a pretty low number, but in this split, she's got a chance. That's a big deal. Now, we've looked at the national polling. This is the NBC Wall Street Journal polling. This caught everyone's attention right after the tape was released. She jumped to an 11 point national league, national point lead, excuse me. Then after the debate, Donald Trump got some Republicans back, but still a nine point lead. Again, see what the national number is by the end of the week to see if voters swing back to Trump or if the tape does lasting damage. He recovered a bit with the debate, but now we're going to keep an eye on it. What are the big issues as we look at that data? Here's one of them. Why do the reasons Donald Trump is being so harsh, so hardcore, so anti-Clinton on the campaign trail right now is that he's bleeding Republicans. He has an 83-point lead over Hillary Clinton among Republican voters. That may seem like a big deal, but that means some Republicans are defecting, either to Clinton or to the third-party candidates or to undecided. As you see, she has an 88-point lead over Donald Trump among Democrats. So he's losing some Republicans. That explains the hard right tone on the campaign trail right now. More significantly, this one is stunning when you take a look at it, and this one is changing the map. Hillary Clinton has a 29-point lead among white women with college degrees. That's a huge number anyway, but it's especially significant that even as he lost in 2012, Mitt Romney won this group, white women with a college degree, by six points. So, Jim, if you look at those trends in the polls, especially among those white college-educated women, among independents and among moderates, if those hold heading into the final three weeks, Donald Trump is in a lot of trouble. The map today looks very bleak. We'll watch this one as it plays out a bit. John King, thanks very much for breaking it down.